Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and today's deck is called White Weenie, but you might notice a little asterisk near the white and that is because we are playing Obosh, the Prey Piercer, in the companion slot and Obosh is not exactly a white card, the 5 mana companion from Ikoria that we can play as our companion if our starting deck contains only cards with odd converted mana costs and land cards. And taking a look at the curve of the deck, we want to be playing a whole bunch of 1-drops anyway, and then most of the payoffs for playing all these 1-drops in mono-white are at 3 and 5 mana, so including a Bosch in the companion slot is not too much of a problem, and then we get a 5 mana 3-5 that says if a source we control with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead, so that's quite the payoff for including a Bosch. Tokens have an even converted mana cost, so those won't count for Obosh's ability, but everything else in this deck is fair game. So the biggest drawback of including Obosh, of course, is the mana cost. Casting a hybrid black and red creature in a mono white deck is not the easiest, so in order to help us cast Obosh, we've got four copies of Godless Shrine and four Sacred Foundries. So these are the major drawbacks of including Obosh in the companion slot. We might take four to six damage per game in order to play all these shock lands untapped. So we'll find out in today's games whether or not that's worth it. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got a whole bunch of 1-drops, and then the major payoffs here for playing all these 1-drops at 3 and 5 mana. We've got Basri, the new Planeswalker from M21, starts out at 3 loyalty, and the plus 1 ability puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on up to 1 target creature, and it gains indestructible until end of turn. And then the minus 2 ability is what we're most interested in. Whenever one or more non-token creatures attack this turn, create that many 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens that are tapped and attacking, so that can very quickly get out of hand. And then the minus 6 ultimate can also be game winning if we can get to it. And then another new inclusion from M21 is Glorious Anthem, 3 mana enchantment giving all our creatures plus 1 plus 1, so we want to be playing this in a deck full of cheap creatures, so there is no better home than a white weenie deck. And then we're playing this over Heraldic Banner, which was in the deck before, which was also quite good since we could play it and play 1 drop in the same turn, so it was very mana efficient. But the Glorious Anthem also pumps toughness, and it also pumps non-white creatures, so it will pump a Bosch once we can play it. And then the other payoff for playing all these 1-drops is Venerated Loxodon, the 5-mana 4-4 Elephant Cleric with Convoke, and when the Loxodon enters a battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature that convoked it. So a play pattern in this deck is turn 1, play 1-drop, turn 2, play 2 1-drops, turn 3, play any additional 1-drops that you might have stuck in hand, and then convoke the Loxodon, putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature that helped convoke it. So that can add a ton of power and toughness to the board at once. And then quickly going over all the 1-drops in the deck, we've got a full playset of Fairy Guide Mother, 1 mana, 1-1 one, one flyer, but we can also use the Adventure to give target creature plus 2 plus 1 and flying until end of turn. Giant Killer, another Adventure creature, 1 mana, 1-2 one, that can tap stuff down for 1 and a white, and it can also destroy target creature with power 4 or greater if we want to use the Adventure first. Healer's Hawk, 1 mana, 1-1 one, one flyer with lifelink. Hunted Witness, 1 mana, 1-1 one, one, that when it dies leaves behind a lifelinking token. Loyal Pegasus, 1 mana 2 1 that can't attack or block alone. And Selfless Savior, another new addition from M21, 1 mana 1 1 dog that we can sacrifice to give another target creature indestructible until end of turn. And a Venerable Knight, 1 mana 2 1 that when it dies puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target knight we control. And then a mana base, 2 copies of Castle Ardenvale as another mana sink in a late game, 12 planes, 4 Godless Shrine, and 4 Sacred Foundry. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. On the play, with a fine hand, bunch of flyers to get an evasive damage. So great if we find a boss reef, for example. Never want to play a loyal Pegasus on turn 1 if you can help it. Temple of Deceit, so it could be some sort of control deck with sweeper effects, which we don't want to see. A Loxodon. I can't attack with just a loyal Pegasus, so I'll just convoke with everything. Not a bad turn 3, especially if we can dodge a Cry of the Carnarium. It 
attack with everyone. And then... Don't really need to overextend into a sweeper, we'll just put a bush in our hands. Can just save a loyal Pegasus. Loxodon survives, and we still have 7 damage. And there's Bossery. Just in time. If they had Extinction Event instead of Ritual of Soot, we probably lose that game, so I'm glad they had the Ritual instead of the Extinction. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. No real payoff, but uh, still a keep. We've got both of our colors for a Bosch, at least. Start with uh, Venerable Knight, I think. Alright, there's our payoff. So we'll hit for two. And then next turn I could play both giant killers before we convoke the Loxodon. Can empty my entire hands. And then the savior also makes it so we can potentially save the most important creature in play. We'll try this. Alright, gets disputed. Fair enough. Still have a nice board state, so if we draw a glorious anthem... Oh boy, blast soon! Alright, there goes my game plan. So we'll attack, put on blast zones, I can save the knights. Opponent just takes it. Interesting. I guess I really need that land. If they have removal, they can punish me by uh, using the adventure first, but I think I'm still kind of going for it here. Might just get countered instead. Alright, they should have done that in response to me targeting it with the adventure, so I wouldn't have resolved the Guide Mother. So we got a free 1-1 one, one flyer. And this reclamation maybe? Nope. Gets negated. Well, Oboshna would be lethal if they don't add anything to the board. Although they can just play Brazen Borrower. Three three shark from Typhoon can ambush the guide mother, fall to three. Alright, so it's gonna be tough to deal those last points of damage.
as we now see Uro as well. Yeah, it's probably game over now. Just play Guide Mother and pass. Escapes Uro. But the thing that really killed us was the Blast Zone. can play my Obosh at long last, but I'm just dead on board. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine opening hands. Don't really have a payoff yet, but a good curve of creatures on the play might still get there. Then I could play Giant Killer to maybe tap down a blocker next turn. Or I can just play two one mana flyers. I don't think I'll end up using the Guide Mother's Adventure here, but it is an option to keep it in hand. We probably don't have enough mana to make use of the adventure here anytime soon. Well, I guess we're all in here. And then hope to draw a glorious anthem. A boss re would be great. A Loxodon too. Don't have any dual lands for a Bosch. A Radiant Fountain into an Uro. Bosch in hands, can maybe start making tokens next turn. And more Radiant Fountains. And a Crisis for three. Can tap it down with our Giant Killer. And a Loxalon's a nice draw. So... I guess I'll just convoke the Loxalon and then I can keep a giant killer untapped. Three, four, five, and tap down a crisis end of turn instead. Narset's fine. Finds a gross barrel. Alright, let's send everyone and our opponents. 
Let's see how much damage is this. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it is lethal if they don't have anything. And then I can make a token with uh, Castle if they do somehow survive. Spiral, and they did find another Radiant Fountain. Alright, so points at 1. I'm also closer to casting my Obosh now with the Godless Shrine. They have enough mana to cast an Ugin, which would be pretty bad for me here. Casualties is fine. Uh oh, is this an Ugin? I guess Ugin wouldn't even do it, because if they minus 5 to get rid of the Loxodon, they're still dead to the token. I come bearing the wisdom of the ancients. Yeah, the castle is actually going to kill them here. Alright, a little 1-1 one, one that could. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Three 1-drops, a Glorious Anthem and a Loxodon, so ideally Loxodon first and an Anthem and Smash. Facing a blue deck. Could it be a blue-green deck? No, just guy deck. Dismissal bouncing the knight. Alright, so that's gonna slow us down quite a bit. The knight lines up poorly against a 1-1, one -one, unless we want a glorious anthem first. I'll just play the giant killer, don't expect to kill any creatures with it. And then maybe next turn I can attack, play some more 1-drops, or we can Convoke the Loxodon, we'll see. This might be some sort of Jeskai Mutate deck, where Callous Dismissal is quite good with all the various Mutate creatures. And yeah, there we see Lord Dracus. So we'll get a chance to Convoke Loxodon, which is nice. And next turn drop Glorious Anthem, and we have the red and black mana required for a Bosch. Dismissal the Giant Killer. And Scorching Dragon Fire the Knights, do I want to save it? I don't think I have to, I would rather protect the Loxodon maybe. Since even with Anthem it just trades for the Lord Dracus. So I can Anthem attack with Pegasus and Loxodon. And replay Giant Killer. Basri is not bad. Probably better next turn than it is this turn, after I get the Anthem down. Yeah, that way the Loxalon doesn't trade off here if they double block. Although I could have also used a plus one to make Loxalon indestructible. But I think this will work out fine. Maybe I can use a minus two next turn with Anthem already in play, making a bunch of attacking two twos, which is much more exciting than a couple one ones. Opponent chumps. Mm -hmm. 
opponent looking at the graveyard, maybe another mutate creature coming up. It's gonna be a Vadrock getting back something from the graveyard, and then it can also trigger the Lord Rackus's ability to put something back in hand. Could see a Scorching Dragonfire, or maybe a Dismissal. Vadrock does a first strike, so it does block the Pegasus quite well. Dragonfire the Pegasus. Now I still might want to save it here, because then Basri can pump it so we can attack past Vadrock. Or we can just tap down Vadrock with the Giant Killer. Gets an island, hopefully no unsummons here. So I can tap down Vadrock. And minus two Basri. Which would be close to lethal, would put him to one. But I think that's my play. And then we still have a Bosch that we can put in our hand and cast over the course of two turns. Now Giant Killer can just kill Vodrock too. Second dismissal, not as good as the first one. Nah, they still seem pretty dead here. And our opponent packs it in, so cool Jeskai mutate deck from our opponent. I wasn't able to beat the weenies. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine hands, missing a payoff. Hopefully we can draw one soon. And there it is. Play knight first. Facing a green deck of the Sultai variety. So we've got a lot of options next turn if we still have a couple creatures in play. Visionary, sure. I think I like Hunted Witness into Loxodon and then next turn maybe Basri minus two. So we did draw the payoffs after starting out with a hand that didn't have any. And this sounds okay. Just have to watch out for an Ugin wiping my board. Yeah, probably need to take out Nissa here. Because if they block Loxodon 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I don't have quite enough to kill them on the spots. So how do I guarantee that I kill Nissa here? If I send Pegasus, that's three. And then Knights and Witness. And then the, th the tokens I can send at Nissa as well. And then I could send Loxodon at my opponent's face. That way if they block the knights, 
Nissa still dies. And then I have the option of blocking with Savior to protect Basri. So I only need to send one token at Nissa, the rest can go face. Grow Spiral, sure. So now we actually get a token from the Hunted Witness, which can protect Basri. I must go. They can't play Ugin yet. They only have seven mana at most. No Blast Zone, but instead of using Blast Zone, our opponent plays Gargroth. I guess Blast Zone would only deal with two creatures here, since I can sack the savior to save one of them too. Alright, is Gargaroth enough to stabilize them? Well, I guess it's not. Makes it easy. And then plus on something random. Savior, maybe. Smash. And that's game. Alright, some lucky top decks. We drew the payoffs and then we drew the giant killer to deal with the Gargaroth. And the Blast Zone wasn't too effective that game. Sweet. We didn't see much of a Bosch in action in these games, although we did get close to casting it a couple times. So overall, is a Bosch worth inclusion? It seems like our deck only really wins if we're super far ahead and we can apply pressure. So the additional damage from the Shock Lands isn't going to matter all that much, since we're going to be the aggressor in almost all circumstances. So I think including a Bosch is probably still worth it at the end of the day, but you could potentially exclude a Bosch to maybe try some other 2-drops that you might not get to play in this version, thinking of the Seasoned Hallow Blade, maybe play Raise the Alarm to combo with your Loxodon, although Raise the Alarm doesn't have the best synergy with Basri's minus 2 ability, since it doesn't make soldiers if we attack with tokens. So there's a few ways we could approach the White Weenie archetype, but I've been pretty happy with this build so far. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.